Socrates is the is the um he's the Prince Rogers Nelson of Toronto hip hop. He's not just an artist. He's not just a producer. He's that guy that if you put his name up on on a, on a board, you can see the lines of people that he's either influenced or worked with him directly, indirectly. Okay, me, 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 me and Socrates did a song called um, Stranger. Now you heard Stranger, you mentioned that, but that wasn't the original Stranger. The original Stranger, because what I'm known for, or one of the things that I'm known for is sampling Canadian rock records. That's something that I pride myself for doing. I like, dropped the needle, that was from a group called Haywire, a, a group from like Prince Edward Island. Like, I just like, drop the needle. I go, damn, that sounds like some hip hop. So I sampled that and then, um. The group, uh, the guess who they had a song called These Eyes. I sampled that. And then um, Gowan, he was an 80s artist. Like he had a big hit in the 80s called Criminal Mind. I sampled that and then made us, you know what I'm saying? So there was a group called the Payolas and they had a song called The Eyes of a Stranger. This was a big tune. So I go, Socks, man, let's flip Eyes of a Stranger. So he did a damn good job with it. He goes, but you know what? I'm, I'll make a plan B just in case we don't get the sample clear. Those guys never got back to us. It took us like a, a year afterwards, after the song was done already, for them to finally come back. Not payos, but the people who were, we were on to like, like we we're on to the next. Like, you know what I mean? We we're on to the next project, you know, but the I the, the original stranger never saw the light of day. I might just put that out just so people could hear the original. Uh, maybe, but there's more Canadian rock records there. But that was something that never saw the light of day. But th what we ended up doing was dope, though, right or wrong. That's a good question, but because you have to take time and go through certain certain uh, peaks and valleys, man. You know, so that's a hard that's a hard thing. But t I will say, tap into your your artistry, and there's assimilators and there's innovators. And there's a couple times when I forgot that I'm an innovator and I try to be an assimilator. It doesn't doesn't work, Frederick. You know. Like, you know, I'm, I'm meant to be, to stand out, be different, man. And, and sometimes I forget that, you know, there's certain phases of my career, I might have forgotten that. And um, sometimes there are certain phases where I really cared about radio. But radio doesn't matter as much as, as, as they used to all the time. You know what I mean? You can't let someone's opinion define you. Or if you get on top 40 and after it defines you or whatever like that, so... A couple of times I try to get on radio, which show, I realized I didn't need it. Well, that's not where I was. I'm still touring. I'm still doing different things. I'm not 20 no more. You know what I mean? So you don't have to be that, that guy all the time. And I think certain parts of my career, I try to, um, I try to um, fit in, in the certain um, scenarios, which I had no business trying to fit because I'm, I'm too large for that. Like, <laughs> this, this, I'm bigger than this. Like, like, what am I doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like Drake was saying, like, what am I doing? What am I thinking? Oh, yeah, I'm doing me. So you got to continue doing you. And my, and my who I am is, is different from a lot of artists. I'm considered one of the main reasons why, you know, hip hop in Canada is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm the main reason, or one of the main reasons why every radio station, not every radio station, but every major record label implemented black music departments. It's because of me. You know what I mean? Um... And, and, and I'm definitely a part of that. I'm definitely the point of reference, right? So there comes a time to what I learned too, another thing. I learned that humility is a skill that we all have to work on. And I've definitely worked on trying to be humble, but I also realized there's humility and then there's stupidity. And it'd be stupid of me not to remind people every now and then how dope I really am. Because by me not doing that, I'm indirectly giving you permission to think you're nicer than you really are. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a big mistake I was making for years. Understand? Trying to be too nice. Because I knew I was dope. But I know I'm there's, I'm there's only one of me. So let's make these guys feel good too. You know what I'm saying? But by doing that, which you should do, you're indirectly giving people permission to see you like, not like you saw, but to, to um, think that they're nicer than they really are. You know? So sometimes I'm not saying I should have walked like a diva or nothing like that, but every now and then I should have reminded people who they're dealing with. Understand what I'm saying? I'm that guy. And I, and, and that's real talk. You see what I'm saying? So there's a fine line between, you know, being cocky, not, none of that. I'm not, that's not who I am. But every now and then you have to remind cats 
And that's why when I did a track like this with, with, with the fellas, a lot of people said like my stuff stood out. And these are guys with different generations on me stuff. You know, it's like, listen to Busta Rhymes album. He bodied that beat, every single beat on that album. He did his thing and he, he let generations know, not generation, a generation, but generations know that he's a serious artist. And that's what I try to be too, a serious artist. And um, that's the mistake I made too. I, I, I um, refer to that in um, that Lord Finesse song, You Don't Know Me. 